Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be comparing two video conferencing packages, one from Zoom, one from Jitsi, right after this. So the reason why I wanted to do this review today is you probably, or maybe you don't know, but two days ago, yet another security problem was surfaced with Zoom. And so I'm going to talk about some of the features between these two uh, packages and then talk about some of the problems and then give you my thoughts on which one I think would be best to use. So Zoom was released in 2013. It was founded by Eric Wuhan. And... They're, the company that holds the uh, source code to Zoom is uh, the Zoom Video Conferencing Corporation. It is not open source. But it does support Android, iOS, Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. And the client supports up to 11 different languages. The license is considered freemium, which means that the client is offered for free, the service is offered for free, but it's only up to a certain number of participants, and after that, you pay. And you pay based on a scale on the number of participants, the maximum number of participants that you want to support in a video conference. <coughs> Some of the features are it has a simple interface, and the usability for non-technical people is pretty good. Uh, they do offer one-on-one -on -one meetings, so you can have private conversations using uh, Zoom. And uh, there's also a group video conference mode. Uh, it does support screen sharing. And there are a number of plugins and a, and a way to add plugins to it to add additional features. Uh, there are browser extensions that add additional capability to uh, online meetings that are being uh, held and you're using a browser instead of the client. <clears throat> there is a hand raising feature and uh, there are multiple views of the participants. Uh, you have a video priority mode where the speaker comes to the front, or you have a gallery view in which all of the participants that can fit on the screen are shown at one time. But it does have the ability to record the meeting to desk, your local desk. And like I said, it's free to up to 100 simultaneous users, and after that you pay a scaling amount uh, in order to add support for additional users. Some of the security features are it has, a, it has the ability to do password-protected meetings. There is user authentication, and it has waiting rooms to allow the host to admit uh, participants into the meeting rather than have anyone that has the, uh, the meeting notice to be able to just drop in. Uh, it also supports locked meetings, and you can disable the participant screen sharing if you want to. Uh, it also has randomly generated IDs, and we'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Uh, it also has the ability to remove disruptive uh, participants. So uh, if someone is preventing your meeting from continuing, you can boot them. So there's been, <clears throat> there's been a lot of security issues that have been surfaced over just the past seven months. And um, the latest one was a couple of days ago where a researcher in Michigan, I believe, uh, was able to brute force the six-digit PIN within 30 minutes to gain access to any meeting uh, and um, be able to access that with, without knowing the PIN ahead of time. So that has been fixed. And July the 10th, there was a critical... Now, this one isn't all that big. I mean, because personally, uh, yeah, there was one that was found in the Windows version that allowed uh, the, uh, an attacker to take over control of a Windows 7 or earlier machine via the Zoom client uh, from the meeting itself. So, um, first of all, my first response to that is, why are you still using Windows 7? That, that support is dropped. And if you're using earlier machines and earlier versions of Windows, why? Again, so, I mean, I don't really consider that a really serious security flaw. I know there's still a number of businesses that are paying for support for Windows 7 uh, and probably some of the earlier ones as well. But, yeah, well, it is, it is what it is, right? I mean, it is a security flaw. June the 17th, Zoom admits that it does, is not providing end-to-end -end encryption on the free version, but they did say that they will provide one in a future release. 
Uh, and June the 12th, the Zoom suspended the accounts of three Chinese dissidents. Uh, not only did they suspend the accounts, they blocked the, the video stream that was ongoing, and that raised a number of concerns from the U.S. Congress as to how that was being handled. And Zoom said it would provide a way to block uh, participants from attending a Chinese-based meeting in the future. That did not go over well with Congress at all as well. So uh, that is an ongoing discussion, I believe. And um, I'll leave it at that. Um, June the 4th, the Cisco Talus revealed two other serious security flaws. Those have been fixed. June the 1st, end-to-end -end encryption was slated only for paid members. And then at this point, this is when Zoom said they would offer it for the free users. And as we see on June the 17th, they said, no, it, it isn't going to be there. And they admitted it wasn't in there. But, you know, th there's been just a number of, of issues from your account information showing up on websites that you didn't authorize, uh, your information being sold to Facebook. I mean, there's just been a plethora of violations that have happened with the, with the uh, not the, the, it's not the, well, I don't know if it's the fault of the software, but rather than it's just the business of the company trying to make money. So, by trying to monetize it. So let's talk about Jitsi for a little bit and see if this maybe solves some of the problems and provides enough features that we can use it. Its initial release was in 2003, so it's been around for about 17 years now. It was developed by Emil Ivov, I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, the stable release, the last one, was in 2017, but they are currently working on the next release as I speak. Uh, it supports Android, iOS, Linux, Mac OS, and Windows, just like Zoom. It does support 35 languages, however, so it, is, it does offer a wider uh, base of uh, localization than does Zoom. It is an Apache 2.0 license, which does make it open source. Now, whether or not that qualifies it as free and open source, <laughs> that's debatable, but it is open source. And the source code for Jitsi is available uh, as well. So Atlassian acquired uh, BlueJimp, which was the company that, fo that uh, founded, uh, that was the founding company for Jitsi, uh, and that happened in 2015. Uh, but the difference between Jitsi and Zoom is, is, first of all, I mean, there's many differences, but the first of all, Jitsi is open source. Second, Jitsi doesn't depend on ad revenue or selling your private data in order to fund itself. Instead, the, what they have done is they have created a premium mode of the software, which is for businesses, called Meet, uh, Jitsi Meeting Pro. And that, is, that, is, uh, that money is collected by 8x8 uh, Global Cloud Company and then is used. That money is then turned back in order to fund Jitsi. So it is, it, the business side funds the free side. And, and that's how they receive their monetization to continue to work. And so far, that has met 100% of their needs as far as, I, as far as what I understand. But I, again, I'm not involved in their financials and don't know that for certain. Uh, but the features are, it also is a simpler interface. Uh, it allows uh, non-technical people to be able to use it. And, and uh, I actually think the, uh, the look and feel of the uh, meeting Jitsi is actually somewhat cleaner than Zoom is, but Zoom has more features. Uh, they do have calendar integration, which there are two forms of that. When you're on the set up a meeting part of the, of the site, you can look and you can click the calendar button, see what scheduled meetings you have that are coming up. Also, you can send out a calendar invite uh, when you send out the invite for the meeting so that people can then add that to their personal calendars that would serve as a reminder for them to attend a meeting in the future. You can also provide uh, participants with a dial-in number if you want, and that allows them to attend the conference in voice only. And of course, won't be able to see the screen in the presentations because we don't have video phones yet, but other than cell phones. But um, yeah, so anyway, uh, of course, you know, if that is that the number is provided free, but you may incur charges if you're using and I don't know what your 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 uh, cell plans are, but you may incur charges to do that. Uh, there are one on one meetings and it also offers uh, group video conferencing as well. They do support video sharing or screen sharing, excuse me, and hand raising features. 
Uh, there are uh, also a similar way to do video priority and a sort of a gallery view of the participants as well. One of the nice things about Jitsi is, is that they have the ability to, for the host to monitor the bandwidth in real time. So if you are in a situation where you are overrunning your ISP's bandwidth, then you can, you can adjust uh, the video and audio quality to reduce the bandwidth requirements. Uh, also, uh, you can manage, uh, you can have, you have the ability to record meetings, but unfortunately it goes to Dropbox. And that's the only choice you have. I hope they, they add some additional capabilities to Jitsi in the future that will allow us to record to our own local drives. But I, I think maybe what they were concerned about there is they didn't want anything touching your local system other than the video stream. So they, they didn't want to open up a pathway where someone might gain access to your machine. And I, and I think that's the reason why they're using Dropbox. But again, I'm not involved with the design team, so I don't know that for sure, but that would be one reason that I could see that they would choose to do that. Uh, you can also host uh, your own server, or you can use theirs to host a meeting. You can download the server component, which is also open source. One of the other nice features about uh, Jitsi is, is if you want to share your, uh, video content from YouTube and you are and you have you know creative license to do that, uh, but if you wish to share, like if, if I wanted to share one of my videos to a live stream, rather than me having to download the video and take up bandwidth on my machine and processing power on my machine, I can use YouTube's uh, bandwidth to do that and they will push it to the Jitsi server in line with the video conference rather than taking my bandwidth. Kind of a nice feature, uh, kind of a, a unique one for sure. So some of the other features is uh, it does have the ability to do password protected meetings as an option. You can turn on end-to-end -end encryption, but it is not on by default. Uh, you have to turn on the, go to the security window and then select it uh, for your meeting. You can disable uh, participant screen sharing, uh, and there are randomly generated meeting IDs. It, and instead of a six-digit key, it is a, seri a fairly long link, which are some of them are kind of humorous, which are passphrases. Uh, or you can choose your own passphrase if you wish. Uh, it does have the ability to remove disruptive participants, and th other than having a fixed limit on the room size, the way Jitsi, the free version works, is that the room size is really limited by your ability to support the bandwidth. So, uh, yeah. Um, does that mean they all come back to you? No. If you're hosting it on their server, then it's going to be the it's going to be the bandwidth that that uh, is going to the server. But if you're hosting it, then all of that bandwidth is on you, right? You're you're collecting it, all their video and then putting it together and then pushing it back out again. You can edit documents together with Jitsi. There's a uh, tool called Etherpad that allows you to do that. So if you have a group that's working collectively on a document of some kind, they can do it together online. Uh, some of the Jitsi issues. Uh, the participant load-in time is slow. It takes a while for them to load in. It doesn't have as many, it's not as feature-rich as Zoom. Uh, and, but, you know, it has the basic features of what, you know, for me, for what I would want. Now, the security issues. So I didn't pose, I didn't put the list here for Zoom. I just kind of <laughs> listed all of theirs. There's just too many to fit on a screen. But as far as CVEs are concerned, within the last, since uh, I think, since they founded uh, in, in uh, 2013, Zoom has had a total of five CVEs that were reported to the CVE database. Uh, Jitsi has had one since, their found, since 2017. Didn't see anything earlier. Um, I thought I, had the, I thought I had the selection criteria to go back all the way, but I may not have. But they had one in 2017, no, none reported last year or the year before. So, yeah, it's, um, does that mean that it's more secure? No, it just means that, that there's not as many people beating on it. Zoom is getting a lot of attention, and when that happens, the security people, it's just like a, a laser focus. I mean, once you have a problem, they, they come out of the woodwork and they start really digging in uh, to find issues. Now, it could be that Jitsi just hasn't had that level of scrutiny yet, 
uh, but it has been around for a while. And, and I would I would have thought that that if there were some major issues, we would start seeing them get surfaced. Um, but one thing, J- Jitsi is written in Java. Java has had a number of security issues over the years. So whether or not you want to use it or not, I'll leave that up to you. But for me, I'm no longer participating in Zoom meetings because I am concerned about their ongoing security issues that affect me as a client participant. So, yeah, that's why I am not participating anymore in Zoom meetings. I'm staying away from them. Uh, as for me, I'll be using Jitsi if I do live events and host them in, in YouTube. So uh, that's, I mean, I know the problem is with Java. I know, I, and, and again, it, it has been beat to death. I mean, yeah, they surface one or two a year, or maybe three or four. But uh, yeah, they, 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 uh, the Java team is pretty quick about fixing things. Zoom, the Zoom team seems to be pretty quick about fixing things to be so be fair to them. They're just under a lot of scrutiny right now. And uh, I, I'd, um, the, the thing that concerns me the most about Zoom is that uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call it shady practices, but I would say questionable business practices. How's that? So that's the way I would put it. I don't like to be negative because I don't know what they're, what they're really trying to do. They need a better way to fund their software is what they need to do, and they really need to open source it. Uh, and that, I think, would li- eliminate a lot of my concerns with it. Turn it over, make it open source, fund, fund it from your business model, do it that way, do it the way Jitsi's doing it, and I would feel a whole lot better about it. That's all I had for today. I'm not going to do... I'm not going to do a demo of the two. I mean, you can. I'll put a link, and if you want to go out and play with it on your own, you can do that. You really need a. You, I'll I'll be demoing it soon enough. <laughs> I can guarantee you that. I plan to do some live events uh, next month. Not not maybe not this month, but next month for sure. So hope to see you all again real soon, and uh, please like and subscribe. And as always, bye for now. <laughs>